Over the last five days, 63 women, 81 men from 83 different countries competed in a series of 36 qualifying games, and we're now down to the last four in both the men's and ladies' division. 在过去的五天里，从八十三个不同国家来的六十三位女选手以及八十一位男选手，在经过了三十六场淘汰赛之后，现在我们看到的都是男女组的四场。The format for this afternoon's finals in both divisions will be one-game matches. The first match will be between the number one qualifier and the number four place qualifier. And the second match will be between the second place qualifier and the third place qualifier. And then the winners of these matches will play for the title match to become the Cubica AMF World Champion for this year 2016. So ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the match will be the winner of the match to become the Cubica AMF World Champion. So let's, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our athletes in our first match. From Singapore, leading qualifier of the week, Bernice Lin. So let's welcome our athletes in our first match. From Singapore, leading qualifier of the week, Bernice Lin. So let's welcome our athletes in our first match. From Singapore, leading qualifier of the week, Bernice Lin. And her opponent in match number one is from Sweden. Jenny Wagner. This is our first show. Welcome to the first round, Jenny Wagner. So, ladies and gentlemen, the ladies will have five minutes of practice, and then the match will begin. So, ladies, commence your practice. 接下来有五分钟的练习时间，然后比赛即将开始。
现在已经开始了，让我们有请来自新加坡和中瑞建筑。All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Bull TV. This is Matt Canizaro, and we are live in Shanghai for the final round of the 2016 Cubica AMF Bowling World Cup. Uh, we've got the semifinals now here for the women. It's been a long week of competition uh, in this first match. We've got Speed and Yeti Wegner as the Number four seed coming in, and our top seed, Bernice Lim of Singapore. In our other semifinal match, it'll be Danielle McEwen of the United States taking on Shaidal Hamidi of Malaysia. The two semifinal winners will face off for the World Cup here in 2016. We're joined now by Rick Vogelsang. Vogelsang, sorry about that. No problem. Volkswagen. Volkswagen from uh, <laughs> coach of Switzerland. And uh, we're getting settled in here. Uh, Chris Barnes stopping in. Uh, he's going to do his best uh, clapping and water bottle delivery today for Danielle as she bowls in our next semifinal again. Uh, number one versus number four, two and three. And then the two winners will bowl for the championship. We have a scoreboard off to the side, so we'll switch back and forth to that when we get a chance. Uh, right now, we're just getting settled in for the first frame for Bernice Lim. She led all week long. Bold great. And that's not a bad opening. Yeah, a little different here. Uh, we bowled yep. the entire 36 games downstairs at House Bowling, a 24 lane bowling center here at the Luan Sports Complex. And now for the final round, uh, we've got a two lane installation up here in the basketball arena. Uh, awesome setup here. Uh, a couple thousand people here to watch live and in person. Uh, and this will be broadcast on Chinese TV. Uh, so a little different environment. Again, 36 games downstairs. All of a sudden, uh, here we are with the bright lights and the high ceilings. And yep. we'll see how our bowlers uh, can hold up in the change of venue. Brand new lanes and bright lights. So Lim starts with a strike, 3-6-10 in frame number two. And Coach Barnes says there's a little more hook up here in the arena. Even more. 42-foot pattern this week down at House Bowling. Uh, very challenging for the players. If you shot 200, it was a great score. Uh, so adding a little more hook and, of course, the TV lights and things get a little bit tricky. It's, it's a lot of pressure. All right, so the opening now for Yenny Wegner, the number four seed, a spare in the first. And she can capitalize on the miscue by Bernice Lim. And she does with a great shot, slaps out the 10. Yep. This is the first time the World Cup has been held in China in decades. Hello. Last time? Beijing. Beijing in 1991. That was a lifetime ago. And a double. A couple of titles here for Singapore at the World Cup 2012. Shayna Ung took home the title 2008. Jasmine Young Nathan. And for Sweden. Great job. 
They swept in 1986, so pretty cool to see that. Both sides, uh, possibility of that today uh, with Martin Larson that and that Yenny Wegner. That was a great shot. Yes, possibility is there. In Sweden also winning on the women's side in 1991 in Beijing. But if Bernice Lim has anything to say about that, she is back on track with a strike in the third. Let's see if we can take a quick look at the scores. Not too bad of an angle here. Uh, you uh, see. No, as long as I think if we pass the fourth frame, uh, it will be. Here's Lim looking to double up, and she does. And she does. She makes the adjustment on that left lane and got ourselves a match here. Well, we won't pick any favorite because top eight downstairs was also within any game anyone could go in. Definitely a star-studded top eight. Very familiar names from various uh, women's events on the PWBA Tour uh, and around the world, World Championships last year. So it could have been any one of the eight, and even going into the last couple games, uh, eighth place still was uh, just 100 or so pins out of the TV show. Uh, so uh, once we get here, again, new venue, um, shootout format. So it'll be a, a knockout, one versus four, two versus three, and Seating only good for lane choice at this point. And the two winners of the semifinals will meet for the title. So, uh, again. A good look up here. So Chris has a good look from up here. Scouting a little. <laughs> Chris Barnes will coach Daniel McEwen in the next semifinal. Danielle will take on Shaidal Hamidi of Malaysia, another top player on the Professional Women's Bowling Association Tour. So a familiar face here on Bull TV. Chris Barnes commenting on the installation here. Uh, the Cubic AMF crew doing a great job getting the lanes ready for this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's nothing the installation can do about spare shooting, Nick, or Rick, holy cow. <laughs> we talked about this yes. earlier today. Um, costly, careless mistakes uh, along the way in over 36 yep. games. It's like you said before, you know, it's when, you, when you shoot a, a 205, a 200, you had a good game. and that doesn't just been built up only by strikes, but you need your spare game. And now, I, uh, even here under this, under these circumstances, pressure is even even greater. So, oh. Bernie Slim taking advantage yep. of it with a strike in the fifth. Take a quick look at the scores. There you see, Danny Wegner. Dropping this bear in the fifth. Bernice doing so in the second. Looks like even in the back, it's a solid build. Some good, good pin reaction.
Lynch. He can't get the 10 to go. For the four, seven, 10 in the sixth. She went high on that lane the first time, struck second time around, and that one creeps up again. So the players just got done with their eight games of round robin match play downstairs, immediately came up to the arena, had about 30 minutes of practice and uh, trying to figure out these two lanes, and uh, now it's showtime. She gives it a run and gets one. Now advantage Fagner if she can take it. advantage of the opportunity. you know that even one of those players already played in an arena final? Well, Bernie Slim actually took home the USBC Queens title uh, in a similar setting, uh, not quite as vast with the high ceilings. Uh, still bright lights of TV, live TV even, uh, back this summer in Las Vegas. But I imagine there's nothing like uh, being here in a foreign land and being surrounded by the many bowling fans in the Shanghai area. Being the one representative from your country with the World Cup title on the line. And still people coming in. Great shot by Yenny, and denied the double by the 10 pin. She will be in the lead here though, in control as we are in the back half of this first semifinal match. Winner advances to the championship here at the 2016 Cubic AMF Bowling World Cup. Just an interesting fact that, that Bernice is the number seven of Singapore. Didn't make the didn't make the national team. Went over to the States. Won a won a title there, and now she's bowling here for another one. Well, that just goes to show you how talented uh, the players from Singapore are, and you know, how much of their lives they dedicate to the sport and training. And, yep. Uh, yep. Definitely want to stay on top of your game because uh, if you don't. There's a, a long, deep list of players ready to take your place. <laughs> and a great job. Yeah. Doubles up. By Bernice there with the double. Absolutely. So Yenny now with a seven pin lead. Super 
Yeah. Yeti won't back down. Let's take a look at the scores while we have this opportunity. As you can see, advantage Wegner. Wagner max score 236 up here in the ninth frame. Best that Lim can do, 229. <laughs> the big double there puts the pressure on Lim, who's going to finish first. Great shot. Lim working on the double in the seventh and eighth. Again, 229 max for the number one seed. She's gonna make okay. this tough on yep. Yenny for sure. So some of the pressure now off of Wegner. 3-6 for Lim here in the 10th frame. Best she can do, 2 7 Final score for her is 207. So Yenny will have to mark in yes. the 10th frame. Yep. She will have a have to have a mark to get past number one seed Bernie Slim and advance to the final here at the 2016 Cubic AMF Bowling World Cup. Here's the shot. Spinner, better lane. Yep, and she does. Just a high trip on the four pin, and that is enough. Yenny Fegner will advance. There's another look at it. Now maybe 
So it's time to try something, but by the time she's back out here, the lanes are going to be a little bit different. We've got our next semifinal coming up. That'll be Danielle McEwen and Shaidal Hamidi. And then the two winners will meet for the championship. Great week for Bernice Lim. She pulled the highest game of the event. Yes, she was the leader on the women's side for many, many games of the 36. We've got four great champions in the semifinals. Final score, 224-207. Jenny Wegner advances. She'll take on the winner of the McEwen Hamidi Semi-final, we'll have that coming up next. This is Matt Canizaro for Bowl TV and Rick Vogelsang, coach of Switzerland, here at the 2016 World Cup in Shanghai. We'll take a break while they get ready to practice and we'll have the next semi-final coming up in just one moment.
minutes and we'll have five minutes practice and then the semi-final match will begin. 接下来将会有五分钟的练习时间，然后正式比赛即将开始。All right, folks, right now we're just uh, getting ready for practice here for our second semifinal on the women's side in the opening match. Jenny Wegner of Sweden defeated top seed Bernice Lim of Singapore, 224-207. And now we'll wait and see Danielle McEwen of the United States and Shaidal Hamidi of Malaysia do battle here. They're the two and three seeds respectively. And the winner will advance to take on Yeni Wegner in the championship match here at the 2016 Kubica AMF Bowling World Cup. Uh, a little different scenario this year. We bowled 36 games downstairs at House Bowling, 24 lane bowling center here. And moved upstairs to the special arena setting for the finals. A couple thousand people here, bowlers and bowling fans alike from around here in Shanghai. And of course, all the competitors this week. 84 countries represented, 81 men and 63 women. And now we're down to the final four on each side. So we've got about five minutes of practice here for Shai Doddle and Danielle. And then they will get to business here in our two lane installation up in the basketball arena at the Luan Sports Complex here in Shanghai. It has been a terrific week, uh, very, exci very exciting final couple games uh, in the top eight and really it could have gone any way I think the top two seeds McEwen and Bernice Lim were looking pretty solid there most of the way uh, but the next two spots in the semifinals certainly up for grabs uh, with a couple games to go and anything could have happened and we've got four of the best players in the world battling here in the semi so uh, really the only advantage to be in the higher seed uh, is the lane choice. And for Danielle McEwen, uh, she had her eyes set on the top four all along. Uh, she had two fourth place finishes at the World Cup back in 2012 and 13. And back then the uh, finals format was a top three step ladder. So she just missed the opportunity to bowl for the title. Uh, and this year with the new format, four players advancing to the semifinals, the knockout round um, getting fourth place would have been just fine, uh, but she qualified second behind Bernice Lim. Now we'll have choice of lane here in her match against Hamidi. Uh, Danielle very motivated, of course, and coming off of a couple of great years on the Professional Women's Bowling Association Tour, picked up a couple titles out there, and said she is far from the same player who finished fourth back in 2013. She has learned a lot uh, about herself and the sport, and works very hard at uh, the mental aspects of bowling as well as uh, bowling for a living. Uh, and I think the biggest thing 
uh, in those four years is just uh, tons of international travel and getting comfortable with uh, traveling with bowling equipment and, and getting to the different countries and uh, time changes and cuisine and all the different things that could make it a little bit challenging along the way. Um, she came straight here from Korea from another event and uh, is a world traveler now. Her and Marshall Kent, uh, that's what they do. Uh, they'll head from here to the next event, wherever that might be. World Series of Bowling coming up. A couple events in Las Vegas. We'll see them at the U.S. Open, most likely uh, in early November. Uh, so uh, to say that these ladies are not sharp would be uh, would be silly with the um, PWBA Tour, 14 weeks long, just wrapping up a couple weeks ago. Uh, they have bowled and seen some very challenging lane conditions over the year. And, uh, you know, we've seen both McEwen and Shy Doddle out there uh, doing things. And uh, the ladies' side especially, uh, just stronger than ever. And uh, we're going to see that uh, coming up again in 2017, the PWBA schedule already released. Uh, we saw the bowlers from Singapore come out and have a great year. Uh, a couple titles going to, of course, Bernie Slim winning the USBC Queens. And uh, she's not even on the national team. That's the, uh, that's the incredible part about Singapore. Uh, it's just how deep their team is. Uh, New Way Fenn having a great year, Rookie of the Year. And uh, Sherry Tan winning a title as well. Jazreel Tan winning in 2015. And we saw them come out for uh, five events and have great success. And of course, with all the bowling there is to do uh, overseas, uh, you know that is what they do, but uh, only a limited amount of time they could be in the United States. Uh, and then when Singapore disappeared, uh, Malaysia stopped by for four weeks and bowled very, very well. Um, and it's incredible, the international representation that they have on tour and at the major events. Um, and interesting to see what happens in 2017 if they figure out a way to spend more time uh, out there and, and plenty of face time on CBS Sports Network in the United States. Uh, some of the players have an experience in college as well. That's good for them. It's for them as well. Great, you know, to, to compete to compete in the U.S. in, in all those tournaments. And I think uh, it's going to make them even stronger uh, stronger than they already are. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our second semifinal match from the United States of America, Daniel Michael Wayne, and from Malaysia, Sayudu Athia. All right, so we are ready now for our second semifinal. Uh, it is the United States, Daniel McEwen taking on uh, number three seed, Shaidatul Hamidi of Malaysia. This is Matt Canizaro with the USBC, joined by Rick Vogelsang, coach of Switzerland here with some expert insight uh, in the booth about uh, what we're seeing here on the lanes and a very challenging 42-foot oil pattern this week. Uh, where 200 absolutely was a great score. That would get you uh, in the top 10 or 12. And then it was all about just making spares and winning matches. And uh, now we're down to the final four. Yeah, I think I think she put a really, really good score down, Jenny. It's it's looks like there was even more friction out here than uh, downstairs, and it's just you know ball control and keep the speed going and and this has been all week long the 10 pin <laughs> that's why you see the scores around the 200 210 215 you know with a good spare game now it's all that plus a lot of more pressure well the way the players described it throughout the week um, you know once they felt like they were they were lined up and, and comfortable it was time to move lanes uh, or they would throw two or three great shots in a row and then all of a sudden a split. Uh, another couple of good shots and a split. And yep. um, it certainly can be mentally challenging, uh, you know, having that happen. And then, of course, moving uh, from one side of the center to the other. And yeah, it's been just a, a change after five frames. You have to make a change. And if you don't do it, you get punished. Here, again, it's a complete different scenario.
First shot for Sidottle. She had a great day yesterday. Throwing shots just like that. She climbed up into the top eight with the highest eight game total of the day uh, among the round of 24. And then just kept on going today and found her way to the number three seed for TV. She's no stranger to the bright lights and even bowled a perfect game on extra frame at a PWBA tour event. And of course, Malaysia with a rich bowling history. A name that comes to mind, Shalin Zilkifli. A champion at the World Cup, I believe. And also here, we just see again that the left lane looks to pick up a bit earlier. We saw in our opening match a 224-207 win for Yeni Wegner over top seed Bernie Slim. And you're absolutely right. Uh, left lane seemed to uh, check up on the players. Uh, Bernice left a 3-6-10 and chopped it early. And then Yeni left a 6-10 and missed that. So they exchanged early open frames, uh, and then it was just a matter of uh, who's gonna carry the rest of the way. They threw great shots, and oh, yeah. Yeni able to hold on for the victory, and she will await the winner of this match in the championship coming up next. McEwen strikes in the second frame after a spare in the first. Now she can figure out this left lane. If she's been paying attention in her eyes this week, uh, 2014 World Cup champion, future Hall of Famer, PBA winner, uh, Chris Barnes. Uh, that is a, a pretty good guy to have in your corner. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Has a good pair of eyes and now as a coach he can really really makes a difference Danielle goes a little bit high leaves a four pin there's Chris Barnes in the background giving the nod of approval uh, yep. he was up here uh, during yeah. our first match and keeping an eye on things he said uh, he likes what he sees with this installation as far as both lanes uh, being uh, the same um, you know to put two lanes in quickly uh, a lot of work has yeah, to be it's done an amazing an amazing job they did if uh, if you look what they what they accomplished here in a week with all not even the lanes also the surrounding the scoreboards the the monitors it's amazing the players only had 30 minutes to practice prior to the start of competition uh, so coach Barnes they really had to take some quick notes and, and he came up here to get a different perspective during the first semifinal and, and saw what he needed to and went down and um, clearly uh, a little bit more hook or earlier hook on the left lane and um, able to figure that out for a great shot. And I think um, at least here in the women's side, uh, whoever can figure that left lane out and throw a couple doubles, uh, it's going to be your winner. Shaidaddle two for two on the right lane. If you look at the replay, 42 foot pattern and a lot of friction downstairs, even more friction upstairs. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> brand new. So. First double of this yep. semifinal, and Shaidaddle jumps out to the lead here as we near the halfway point.
believe they call that the, uh, the upper deck seven. That was a, a terrific shot, high flush. And uh, number seven just won't cooperate. Hard to make an adjustment off of that great shot. Uh, Rick, what do you yeah, think? If I, would, <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I, just, I would just wait for the next one because that, that, was, that was a great shot. And sometimes, yeah, well, is that luck or unlucky? <laughs> but I think it's been, it's, it's, it's also Chris. Okay, there is a bit more friction here, but the, 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 the sc scoring characters and, and, and the way it goes, it's exactly the same as downstairs. Would we see a huge game? Maybe. All well, right. both go figure it out, so. Kewin goes light, mixes him up, and she's got her first strike on the left lane. Let's take a look at the scores. A little tough to see with this angle, but there they are on our giant scoreboard. See Hamidi with the lead up by 11. A look at Barnes and McEwen talking through things. Yeah, we just have to wait until the right lane has to be reset. I think Chris is saying, you know, hey, can you believe how large my noggin looks on that <laughs> <laughs> 200 foot scoreboard above the lanes? Again, Chris Barnes winning this event in his only appearance back in 2014. So he understands the prestige and the pressure and uh, has been a great asset to Team USA this week. Helping Marshall Kent uh, just miss the top eight. Made a great run. And Danielle, of course, here in the semifinals. But nice break there yeah. for Sidaddle. Got to have a little bit of luck on your side. And... Uh, yeah, it looks like she's just playing a little bit more direct. This was <laughs> high. <laughs> but let's see what she does on the on the left lane. See that shot this week easily could have been a big four or cave it in for the three bagger. Shredato leaving the seven pin. Looks like brand new pins as well, so the carry gonna be a little bit different. They're a little stubborn when they're new. Yeah, but I think as well this is, is when you come from, let's say, from a high scoring environment, you come into stepping in an arena and you get this, you know, the, you will be more uh, frus frustrated, let's say. These girls been bowling like this all week long, and you can expect a seven and ten. So I think they will do. Will be all right. I think it will not affect them so much. Ball speed a little bit slower there, it looked like. And uh, that one creeps high, but gives the trip to four pin. And McEwen now doubles up. So let's take a look at the scoreboard there, you see. McEwen down 10 pins now after five frames. And 
Definitely not a lot of strings of strikes this week. Spares are very important. Grinding out 2 0 2 10. Been a great week for you here at the 2016 at Cubica AMF Bowling World Cup. Well, she's locked in on the left one now. Right, big shot there for Danielle. Take a look at the replay. There was no doubt about that shot. Dead flush, 10 back for the 2016 USBC Team USA Trials Champion. That's how she found her way here to the World Cup. That is the qualifying for this event for Team USA. Trying to improve on a pair of fourth place finishes back in 2012 and 13. But trying to stand in her way, Shaidat al Hamidi of Malaysia. Yeah, that's that went too far right for her at the back, so. Still again, nine spare. Right, take a look at the scores. Got ourselves a match here. Rick Vogelsang, coach of Switzerland, joining us for the women's championship round here in Shanghai. We're in the special arena setting here at the Luan Sports Complex. Two lanes installed in the basketball arena. Shaidadl avoids trouble there again. Lucky to leave just the seven, her third consecutive nine count. Danielle has the momentum Certainly has the motivation to step up and deliver here and the experience. Another great shot. All right, McHugh now with the four bagger. Let's take a look at the replay. She is locked in, as you said. Yeah. Here she played it. A bit more to the outside, but it had a huge back end. So traditionally, the, the World Cup uh, scores a little bit higher. Uh, this time, it's 42 foot pattern for a variety of reasons. Uh, played a little bit more challenging for the players. I think many appreciated the challenge and the premium on shot making. Obviously, the ones who bowled well really appreciated it. But Danielle making it look pretty easy right now. <laughs> yes, and I think she will be pretty happy with these lanes today. <laughs> so we bowled the, the whole event downstairs at House Bowling, 24 lane center. Split 12 and 12 with a, an aisle down the middle. Uh, and now two brand new lanes up here in the arena. Danielle keeps throwing shots like that. They might name this the Danielle McEwen Arena. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
play the exact same line and There's a look at the scores. McEwen can shoot 259. And Doddle can get to 237. She's going to finish first and put the pressure on McEwen for the 10th frame. She has been pretty strong in the 10th frame, so it's not over yet. Evan creeps high, trips yep. the four again. Just, just a little bit more left at the break point than the, the ball before. So it looks like the players uh, have a little bit of room up here yep. on the arena, different perspective for us even uh, after watching all week long. Uh, they're a little bit higher up here. And, um, you know, Rick, you had your players out there. and Obviously, a, a lot of adjusting needed to be done. Uh, and now it all comes down to a couple of shots here in the 10th for Sidoddle. Yeah. Well, it's, been, it's been for her like, well, it's not the, you know, we've seen her also during the, you know, the top 24, top eight. So strike, 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 spare, spare, then ninth frame, 10th frame, finishing very strong. Well, as a coach, uh, your player just stepped up. She went a little bit high, tripped to four. Uh, what do you tell her to calm her down in that situation to throw as good of a shot as we just saw? It, it's just pr probably to try to get, you know, get her mind of it, uh, 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 get her relaxed. So. What you don't want to do is that they even even tense up even more because oh what we're gonna do what we're gonna do you know just just try to relax and make them you know confident in that they can that they can do that they can produce a good shot. All right, by my calculations here, Danielle will need eight spare strike or better to win this game. She can shoot 259 max score. Hamidi with the 236. There's a look at the score. Back to the action. Oh, that's a perfect answer. <laughs> Well, that takes the spare shooting out of play right there. Yep. The only way to not have to worry about that is just throw it the best that you have all day and send 10 pins back. And both knew that this was one hell of a shot. There was no doubt about that one. McEwen, gonna take a deep breath here. And Working on six consecutive strikes. Getting comfortable and ready to think ahead to the championship match here. Oh, a bit wide. Yeah. yeah. So he just missed it now a little bit more, and there is the 10 pin, but it doesn't matter anymore. All right, so coach, as, as you're sitting here watching these couple of matches here, and um, you know, it does look like the, the players have a little bit of room. That's got to help loosen the arm swing a little bit, I would think. Uh, yeah, it, it looks, it looks, that's, they almost look more comfortable over here than downstairs. <laughs> the scoring pace is better, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, well, we've got the best of the best here coming up next, the championship match here at the 2016 Cubic AMF Bowling World Cup. Danielle McEwen will take on Sweden's Jenny Wegner for the title. Already improved on the fourth place finishes from 2012 and 2013. And now 
Looking to win it all here in McEwen. Yeah. 248, 236 over Malaysia's Shaidal Hamidi. This could be also, again, a good match.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, the title match for the 52nd Gibbiga Anna Foley World Cup. Would you give a big warm welcome to Jenny Wagner from Sweden? Like the Jenny Wagner. Jenny Wagner. And the opponent this afternoon from the United States of America, Daniel McAway. Like to make one of the Daniel Michael. Once again, the gentlemen, five minutes practice, and then the title match will
second in the NFL World Cup. From Sweden, Jenny Wagner. And from the United States of America, Daniel McAway. Christmas and the most. That's the region that Jenny All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready for our championship match here at the 2016 at Kubica AMF Bowling World Cup. Team USA's Danielle McEwen taking on Sweden's Yanni Wegner. Big moment here for both players. And for Danielle, fourth place finishes at this event in 2012 and 13. Already improved on that. Looking to get the job done here. I believe the last woman from the United States to win this event was Deandra S. Beatty a decade ago in 2006. And for Sweden, uh, they did win here on the women's side in 1991 in Beijing. Last time the event was in China. And swept the titles in 1986. So pretty neat there. And that possibility is still alive here today with Martin Larson in the step ladder or in the in the semifinals for the men. So this is Matt Canizaro for Bowl TV. And joined in the booth by Rick Vogelsang, coach of Switzerland. Here all week obviously with uh, among the other 83 countries represented at the World Cup this year. A great turnout, 81 men, 63 women. And now we're down to our final two ladies. Uh, on the way to the final, Wegner defeated top seed Bernice Lim, 224-207. And McEwen stepped up, delivered a strike in the 10th frame to seal the 248-236 win over Shaidal Hamidi of Malaysia. Now for both players, Rick, this left lane has been a little bit tricky. Yes. Um, hooking early. Yeah, and, and during during the warm-up, um, Daniel looked looked very, very comfortable in both lanes. And Jenny just started with the same started with the same ball that, that she played the first match, but didn't had a good look. Switched to another ball. And Worked out pretty well for her so far. All right, second frame for McEwen. She goes high, leaves the 6'10". And Rick, some uh, historical implications here. Um, just FYI for everybody out there, for, uh, for Mr. Barnes. Uh, he is part of the only husband and wife tandem to win at the World Cup. His wife, Linda, took home the title in 2005. Chris winning 2014. Uh, so now he also returns uh, as the coach of Team USA. So the potential to uh, to see the World Cup from many perspectives, of course, <laughs> watching from home as yes. his wife won. Yes. Uh, and then as a player and now as a coach. There is only one then left, one of his kids. <laughs> and Chris with twin sons, so uh, definitely still a possibility. Uh, long way to go until we're celebrating or hoisting the trophy here <laughs> in Shanghai, just uh, the second frame. And Wegner leads early with a double. Danielle McEwen gonna step up here on the left lane. It's been tricky for all of the players so far today. I think again, it's whoever figures out that lane and whoever can carry for a double or three in a row or based on what we've seen, maybe eight in a row. Great shot. So we're going on a 42-foot pattern. Uh, to, did not yield very many high scores this week. 200 was a great score. High game of the week, 290 a couple times. Bernice Lim from Singapore and uh, Ileana Lomelli from Mexico. One player, two players had the front nine, and that was about it. So uh, no excitement for 300, not nope. any huge scores. And well, maybe it's still going to come. We still have some, some games left. The re-oil, the redressing of the lanes after every game could help as well. So Yenny got that one wide, the 2-4-5.
Uh, now, Rick, of, of all the games we watched this week, uh, it was 36 total. Uh, and uh, missing to the right. Uh, I would say there's probably not a lot of room outside. Nope. And as you can, if the, the people watching it, it, it's when they when they do the replay and when you watch where the ball is, you know, furthest to the right, you can see, you know, there is hardly any room. You know, you miss a little bit too far right, one one and a half board, and it's it's you know, it's a ten pin or even worse. See, in our other semifinal uh, with McEwen and Hamidi, it looked like. Players that uh, were able to open up the lane a little bit more, but uh, again, you don't want to miss wide right like we just saw Yenny do, uh, as that's not going to make it back. So this 42-foot pattern definitely, um, definitely challenged the players, and, and I think they appreciated it. Uh, and now we're seeing two of the best battle for the title here in Shanghai. Yes, it's it's the difference. The difference. You can see as well on the le on the left, you miss slightly in, and it just w walks, you know, just runs away. It it is, I think it this is going to be the the crucial lane, uh, you know, that determines you know, who's going to be the champion. Here's McEwen working on a strike, and the open frame by Wegner in the fourth could be a, a huge opportunity for Danielle here to step it up. Got that one a little bit right as well, but the speed's slow enough. It made it back, and she leaves just a seven. Chris Barnes looking also a little perplexed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think he thought that shot was going to make it back. And it almost did, yep. uh, but just not powerful enough to uh, to get number seven to tip over. Take a look at the score in just a moment. McEwen can take the advantage now. Almost leaves the 7-10, yeah, the that seven was goes. Yep. But McEwen up five now after four. So it looks like we've got either early hook or hang to the right. Starting to look a little more like what we've seen all week downstairs at House Bowling. Yes. Again, we're in a special arena setting for the finals. Two lanes installed in the basketball arena up here at Luan Sports Complex. The rest of the event, 36 games held downstairs in the bowling center, 24-lane center. I think our heartbeat just went up a little bit on that spare. <laughs> There's McEwen and Barnes talking through what just happened in those two frames. A little bit of light, left a seven pin, and then nearly a seven ten on the left lane. 
There's Yeni stepping up, down five after four frames. <laughs> Great shot, snaps out the 10. Yeah, this came from a long way. Just look at the replay now. Got a giant screen above the lanes as we are being. She was at least four boards more right and, and just found friction. Being taped for Chinese television right now. And you're watching here on Bowl TV. We've been here all week long. Excited to bring the conclusion of this year's World Cup. <laughs> Our two-time defending champion, Claire Guerrero of Colombia, finished 12th. She was looking to become the first person in history to win this event three consecutive years. Also, would have been the first woman to win three times. Again, she made the round of 24, came up a little bit short, and finished 12th overall. Uh, we also had two-time champion Alma Guerra of the Dominican Republic here, looking to become the first three-time winner on the women's side. She finished 17th. Danielle is going to reset. Got a, a lot of folks in the venue here, so picture yourself. At a basketball game, essentially, in a, a, a yeah. big college or high school gym. Uh, even bigger, a 3,000-seat gym. And two bowling lanes right down the middle of the court. And on the way to the final today, McEwen defeated Shaidal Hamidi of Malaysia, 248-236. And we've got... We got some kids. <laughs> Three kids running around <laughs> in the bleachers. And now they're about to get in trouble in front of 2,000 people. Yes, that's going to be detention for them for <laughs> three months. <laughs> this, <laughs> yes. Danielle McEwen comes from a big family. A couple of sisters and a brother, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure they've been a little bit rowdy at the bowling center before, and she's yep. used to it. She's laughing it off, and uh, especially that's if she can get up and throw a good shot here. That's the only way you can do it. All right, here's McEwen. And that's her answer. She delivers, absolutely. Yenny stepping up and doubling, and McEwen answers, but uh, trails by five now. And he opened up with a double, and then doubled in the fifth and sixth. We'll take a look at the scoreboard now while we have an opportunity. And there it is. So that double swinging the momentum back for Swedish superstar. Coming up next on the men's side, we've got number one seed Martin Larson taking on Irish two-hander Chris Sloan. And another match will be local standout. Oh. Wang Hongbo of Excellent China shot. will take on Anze Gravahan of Slovenia. So last time a bowler from the host country won this event, 1981. So Hongbo looking to make some history. And for Anze, Best finish in history for Slovenia already. Uh, so we'll have a lot to talk about during the men's final, but uh, now it's all about the ladies. That's also a great shot.
Fegner up, working on three consecutive strikes, leads by five. We're in the eighth frame. Four in a row, and McEwen has to answer here. Take a look. There is the scoreboard. Back to the action, McEwen up, working on a double eighth frame. This is the championship match of the 2016 Cubic AMF Bowling World Cup in Shanghai. Yes. 10 won't go, Messenger won't get it. Yep. Yep. Danielle in trouble here with two frames to go. Went wide again at the back and just didn't come back enough. And he will finish first. She can shut out McEwen. Here's Danielle in the ninth frame. High again, a 6 10. The so best she'll be able to shoot is 2 16. It may not matter if any can deliver in the ninth and tenth. seen crazier things happen during the week so Danielle converts now Yenny's gonna step up and try to win it here with Danielle on the bench Here's a look at the scores Is not what she was hoping for. Definitely never an easy spare. No. Nope. And now, not under these conditions. On the biggest stage in bowling this year, the World Cup final. Covers it, so a mark and count will do it. If you look at the scores, you see him off to the left of your screen. 15 ahead. Best McEwen can do is 216.
And there she it is. She gets the strike, absolutely. Sweden. Just need to keep it on the lane and the celebration can begin. There's a look at the score. She needed a mark and count, got the strike. Now keep it on the lane, Yenny Wagner, your 2016 World Cup champion. Gets the four to go for the double. And this one is over. The World Cup headed back to Sweden. Last time Sweden claimed a women's title, Rick, was 1991 in Beijing, China. Yeah. Three strikes in the 10th. <laughs> McEwen's gonna wrap things up here. Great week for Danielle. Came in as the number two seed. Had her sights set on the top four. Improved on her previous finishes of fourth place in 2012 and 2013 but just gonna be a little bit short here in the final. Uh, we knew it was gonna be a matter of who was able to carry and who was able to figure out that tricky left lane. Yep. And Yenny Wagner with a nine strike, 231. She left the baby split and missed it, the 310 in the fourth frame, followed that up with four consecutive strikes and then stepped up in the 10th and delivered for the title again, first time for Sweden taking home the women's title since 1991 in Beijing. The final shot for Danielle coming up here. She finishes with 204. Not going to be enough here against Jenny Wegner, your 2016 World Cup champion. We'll have the trophy presentation, I believe, out here on the lanes. And we'll put the mic up so you can hear the official presentation.
is gonna do it from the women's final here at the 2016 Kubrick AMF Bowling World Cup. Again, Jenny Wegner of Sweden defeats Team USA's Danielle McEwen, 231-204 in the championship. World Cup going home with the Swedish woman for the first time since 1991. We'll have the men's semifinals coming up next here on Bowl TV. I would do appreciate everybody tuning in here. This is Matt Canizaro, and we appreciate having Switzerland coach Rick Vogelsang on with us throughout the women's semifinals and final. It's been a great week here in Shanghai. And congratulations all around to all the bowlers from 84 countries, 81 men and 63 women, and we now have a champion. It is Jenny Wegner of Sweden. Folks, that's the news for now. We'll be back with the men's semifinals coming up in just a few minutes. Appreciate everybody being here for Bull TV. This is Matt Kinazar. We'll be right back.